So now we have the project set up and some of the configuration done. So now we have those in place. I'm just going to spend a bit of time designing out our project to give it a little bit of style. Now, again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can just leave it plain, but it's up to you whether you want to follow along. I'll also put a link in the description to the view files in case you don't want to type all this out yourself. It's completely up to you. As stated in the previous video, if you are new to Laravel and Bootstrap, then I recommend that you just type this out so you get used to it and learn its syntax. And also, like I said, you don't have to use Bootstrap here. If you're using something else, then obviously you can skip this video and build up your own design using whatever front end framework you're planning on using. So if you are following along and you're going to stick with me on this, then let's get started designing this dashboard. So I'm just going to remove all these classes for now, as we're not going to be using these with Bootstrap. So now we've cleaned the HTML up a bit. I'm just going to structure this a little differently. So I'm going to use this as the base template, and then all of our views are going to extend from this base template. So underneath our header here, where I'm going to build the menu, I'm just going to get rid of this hello users for now. And I'm going to create a div called main for the main content. We're going to call the blade method odd yield. And this is where we're going to yield the content of our blade files. And then I'm just also going to rename this and put it into a folder. So inside of views, I'm just going to create a new directory and I'm going to call this templates. And then I'm just going to copy the welcome.blade.php inside of templates. And then I'm going to rename this file to main.blade.php. So now this is our main template. That's going to give us the things like the headers across all of our pages. Now let's start creating our first page. So under the root of views, now I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this index dot blade dot php and then the first thing we need to do is extend our main dot blade dot php file so we can do uh, extends and we want to extend from our templates directory and we want to extend our main template and now we need to make a section for our content so we can do an at section and we're going to call this section content and then we just need to call end section now, anything that we put inside of this section named content will be yielded out in our main template under our yield content key. So you could yield out multiple sections here if you wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to yield out a single content section because that's all we need for this design because it's going to be relatively basic. So anything inside of here now will be, will be yielded out into our main template. So let's just try that. So we can just do a H1 tag here. I'm just going to say hi from index and then finally over in our root file we need to tell it now to look for our index file instead of our welcome file so under the root of our project we come into roots and we can come down to web.php and we can see we have our forward slash root here and we're turning the view welcome so let's just change this over now to index let's refresh this in the browser and you can see now our index page is being injected into our main.blade.php file so now let's build up our menu. So I'm just going to jump across to the bootstrap documentation here and copy the syntax for the menu so we don't have to type all this out. So I'm just going to copy this basic nav bar here. And then over in our main.blade.php file, I'm just going to paste this at the top of the body tag. Now instead of the obviously nav bar brand here, we're going to print out the name of our application. So we need our blade curly braces again. And if we just come up to our title tag here, we can just copy and paste this down. So on our navigation links, I'm just going to get rid of this span tag here because we're not going to use that on home. And then let's create a link to our users section. This is where the admin can manage the users, for example. Uh, we're not going to use a drop down for now. I'm going to get rid of that disabled example as well. And then we're not going to be using the search box. So we'll get rid of that. We'll change that form to a div instead. And we'll keep that styling. And now we can grab this roots that we had within the original template and let's paste them over here on the right hand side and we can just get rid of that empty div now as well so let's just take a look at this in the browser and see where we're up to so you can see now we have our nav bar for our admin panel we have the home page which we're currently on and we'll create a users page in future videos and we also have our login and register links so this is already starting to look good i think i'm going to wrap this in a container so it's a little more centered. 
So over in our code, just underneath the main nav, I'm going to create a div and I'm going to give this a class of container. And then I'm just going to wrap all of our menu items inside of the nav, inside of that div. Now I'm just going to indent this to make it a little bit easier to read. Let's take another look. And you can see that now centers all of our links within the middle of the page. And as you can see, that now gives a fixed width to everything in our navigation bar. Now I think for the body as well, I'm going to wrap that in a container. So all of our child pages are also going to respect the fixed width that we have here. We can do this down in main. So we can just say, give this a class of container. Now everything that's yielded out from our child templates will be also wrapped in a container. And as you can see, our index page has now been centered. So I'm going to change some of the colors of our navigation bar and also give it a little bit of a drop down shadow. So over in our app.scss, I'm just going to create out these styles now. Now you could put these in a separate file and I do recommend that you do that, especially if you're building this project that you're going to be using, as this will make it much more maintainable moving forward. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to be putting it in a single app.scss file. So I'm just going to create some variables for the various colors here. So I'm going to create a variable called navbar. And I'm going to set this to a dark bluey gray color. And I'm also going to change the background color to a soft gray. So I'm going to create another variable called background. And I'm just going to set that to a soft gray color. I'm also going to change the default color of the text. I'm going to create a variable called text for this, and I'm going to set this to like a really dark gray color. It's not quite black and it's not like a light gray. I think it'll give a good contrast for the application. So now we just need to apply these styles. The first one we can do, we can actually do the body and we can say background color and we want to set this to our background variable. And then we also want to style all of our text. So we can call color and we're going to use our text color. Now the next thing we need to do is build this. So over in our terminal, you can see I've got my artisan server running here. So I'm just going to open up another tab in my terminal. I'm going to do an npm run watch. Now what this command does, it sits there watching for any changes to your JS or your SAS styles. And if it spots anything, it'll automatically recompile your CSS and your JS for you. You don't have to keep jumping in and doing an npm run dev every time you make a change. This command will do all that for you. So over in our project, let's give this a refresh. As you can see, the background is now that light gray color and our text is that really dark gray color. The next thing we need to do is apply the style to our navbar. So we can do navbar. And this is the class that has been applied by the bootstrap navbar that we copied across. So we want to give this a background color. I'm going to give it a background color. I'm going to use the variable navbar for this. Now we're just going to save on this and Laravel Mix will automatically recompile our assets for us. And now because we're overriding a bootstrap style, we need to remove the light tag from our syntax. So over in our main.blade.php file, now up in our nav tag here, we can see we've got a navbar, navbar large, and we've got navbar white and background white. So let's just get rid of them two now because we're going to be applying our own color scheme for the navigation. So let's give this a refresh now in the browser. And you can see now that gives us our background color. Obviously the uh, link color is our white blue and that's not really what we want. So I'm going to set this to white. So over in our app.css on the navbar, I'm going to say everything within the navbar class that is a link. We're going to set the color of this and we're going to set the color of this to white. Let's check this out. And we see now all our links and our title is all white. Now let's give this menu a little bit of a drop shadow. So it's not such a harsh of a transition onto our main page. So under our navbar class, I'm just going to give this a box shadow and I'm going to make this drop shadow five pixels with 10 pixels spread. So I'm going to give this an RGB alpha value, and this is what allows us to apply a transparency. I'm going to make a gray color here. So I'm going to do a 204, 204, 204. And then finally for the alpha, I'm going to do this 0 0.3. So this gives it a transparency. And let's have a look at this in the browser. And as you can see now, we have a bit of a drop down shadow here. And I think the final thing I'm going to do is maybe put 
a bit of a margin at the bottom of this nav bar. So the page content moves down a bit. So under here, I'm going to do a margin bottom. I'm going to give this a margin of 40 pixels. Now, as you can see, our page content now starts here. So I think this is enough now to get started. But as we move on through the series, I will be making changes to this as we add more features. And we're going to be changing the layout dependent on the user. So for example, we probably wouldn't be showing this users tab if there's no user logged in. And then we wouldn't be showing that users tab to all of our users. We probably only want to show it to our admin users. So these are all features that we are going to implement later on in the series.